praise God. It's good to see every one of you this morning. My name is Grace Wajambo, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Amen. It is important for us to remember, remember that you have been born again. Amen. And give a testimony that we are being challenged even earlier. He who has the Son has a testimony. Hallelujah. So this day, I want us to share on the topic, faithful to the end, faithful to the end. I want to thank God for every person who participated in the week of prayer and fasting. Uh, primarily, I want to thank God and then thank uh, our, the elders who labored and all the brethren who served in that week to help us uh, to give us guidance and direction even in prayer through the week. Do you appreciate? Yes. yes. Sometimes if you are given that passage of scripture and you are told, share. <laughs> Let somebody else share. So it is important for us to appreciate. And one of the ways of appreciating is tuning in, listening, because if it has been shared and it is there, in the WhatsApp, on the WhatsApp wall, and you don't listen. Does it help anybody? No, it won't help you. It won't help me unless I tune in. And that is one way of appreciating the brethren and the ministry. Praise God. And so we want to carry on from that. We just want to pick something, even from what we, uh, we went through last week. And we are doing two chapters in the book of Re Revelation, that is chapter 2 and chapter 3. I want to tell you that we are in a season when I think the exams are just around the corner, isn't it? Yeah, those who are doing KCSC are doing just around the corner, and those others. The CBC exam, I don't know what it is called. Yeah, uh, it's also around the corner. And so it is a time of exams. And what does exams do? And then they, they are a way of examining yourself or being examined whether you are up to what you have been taught. You have been taught certain things. So are you able, have you been transformed by what you have been taught? Isn't it? Yeah? How can you reproduce what you have been taught? Or is there a change in your life? And so those young people, they'll be tested. And we want to pray that God will help them, that they will do well. They will excel even in their exams. And we can take a cue from that, and we also examine ourselves. Let us have a, a, an assessment, even for ourselves. We have entered the last quarter of the year 2022. Can you imagine? 2022, it's soon coming to an end. We are already in October. So how many months? Just three, these three months. And watch it. They will fly past. Soon the year will be over. And you remember at the beginning of the year, the Lord gave us his word, isn't it? He told us that we need to, have, to be divinely aligned to him, to be aligned in a divine manner, that we, we should not be conformed to the things of this world, but that we should, be trans we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. How far has that happened in our lives? How can we gauge ourselves? It's so important for us not just to come to church, hear a word, and disappear, but go back like the, uh, the, the herbivorous animals, like the cow, that's chewing the card, thinking through, having a time of examining yourself. You know, many times, many people at the, uh, the end of the year, they want to examine themselves. How did I fare this year? At the beginning of the year, you want to uh, examine and to trust God and to wait on the Lord to direct you. How should I go this year? Yeah? So, uh, as much as the year is not yet over, we want to start that aspect, that uh, uh, discipline of examining ourselves. 
And uh, Jesus, Jesus is very good in that. He talked to Apostle John in the book of Revelation. And he told him what he had examined those particular churches. He told him, write what you see and what you hear. And send these letters to the churches I'm sending you to. How many churches? There are seven churches. And all these seven churches, as much as they were in the day of Apostle John, the whatever was ministered to them, it also applies to us. It applies to our age. And so every letter to every one of those churches speaks to you, speaks to me, speaks to us collectively, speaks to us even individually. And it was wonderful listening to the various ministers ministering on the different churches. And then you examine yourself and you say, oh God, would you say that about me? And so that is what I want us to do this morning. I just want us to have a time of self-evaluation. I desire that we may have, uh, we may have uh, a habit of having continuous assessment. Don't wait until the end of year. Do it often. Do it often. E examine yourself more and more often. Hallelujah. And so, we want that you identify in your life. Check your life. And see where you are weak or you are slow so that you can improve. We have time before the year ends, yeah? We, have, we said we have three months. So before the end of the year, you have time to improve. You have time to speed up where you have been slow. Yeah? Identify where you are wrong so that you can be able to correct. Correct yourself. Correct uh, the ways that you had that were wrong. Identify where you are right. Do you think you are right somewhere? Yes? Yes, just ask your neighbor, were you right in any way? Yeah? Sometimes people say, I'm, hum I'm you know, being humble, they don't want to say that they were right. But Jesus acknowledges, even when you are right, and he tells you you are right in this way. And so if you are right in, in a certain way, you need to keep up. Yeah, don't lose the momentum, keep on. Keep it up. Where with a vision? Yeah. Where you have been, that you have, you have been there in the ministry continually, consistently. Keep it up. It's a right thing. So if there is a wrong somewhere, then it needs to be corrected. But where there is a right, even Jesus acknowledges. Sometimes we go home, if, if you are a parent, you go home and you check on your children or you check the people, your workers, and everything you see is wrong. You see a wrong thing there, you see a wrong thing. Please, let us also look for right things. Somebody has done something right, at least. Atakama Nimoja. Acknowledge that and let them know that at least you washed the dishes. Thank you very much. You may not have cleaned the floor, but at least you washed the dishes. So Jesus acknowledges even when we do something that is right. Hallelujah. Amen. So what would be Jesus' assessment of you and Jesus' assessment of me? What would he say to us in regard to our theme, divine alignment? What would he say if he looks at Crisco City Church? Would he say that we have been divinely aligned to the purposes of God or whatever the word that God gave us this year that we, you know, we are all, we're all right? It is for us to examine ourselves. Ama? Senior. Now, when you look at those letters, the letters in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, when you look at those letters, you find that there is a certain trend or a, they have a similar pattern. Every one of those letters, they have a similar pattern. They may have a few or a few uh, or a minor exceptions, but the main pattern was the first was a description of Christ. 
Jesus would say, I am who this, this, this. So he is the author of the letter. So he introduces himself even to the people that he is speaking to. And the next thing is a commendation. Not recommendation. Recommendation and commendation are two different words. Sometimes we confuse them. So commendation is you're being commended. You're being praised. Yeah, you have done something good. You're being honored. Amen. You're being honored for what you have done that is right. So Jesus would give commendations to those, to those uh, uh, congregations. And the third one is a rebuke for spiritual shortcomings. He would give them a rebuke for spiritual shortcomings or deficiencies and even a correction for what is wrong. He would not leave people in their wrong, but he would correct them. He would rebuke them. He would tell them, you are wrong in this. Have you have not been doing well in this area? And then finally, there would be a promise to those who overcome, the overcomers. You say, let him who has a hear, listen to what the Spirit is saying. He who overcomes, will I do this and the other? Different things. So I just want to take this pattern and use it. So remember, our topic today is faithful to the end. That, I believe, is what Jesus desires of you and of me. That we be faithful to the end. Hallelujah. And our elder has just read here about uh, uh, Jesus giving the parable. The parable of this man, uh, the, this man and his servants. And the people who are commended who are told, good and faithful servant. Jesus wants us to be faithful to the end. Right. So, according to the first uh, pattern, is a description of Christ. So, how do you know Christ? How do you know Jesus in your, in your life? How well do you know him? When he has introduced himself, he introduces himself to his church. How well have you known him? How well do you know Jesus? You know, John, John had already known Jesus. Jesus had introduced himself even to the disciples. And so John already knew Jesus, and he was introducing that Jesus to the people that he was writing to in the book of Revelation. But even that is in chapter 1. If you read chapter 1, you find John already introducing Jesus to his listeners, to the congregations that he is writing to. But when, then when you go to the various letters, you find Jesus giving a specific uh, introductions about himself to the different congregations. And so you can check even in those uh, uh, um, ways that Jesus introduces himself and find out, do you know Jesus in that manner? Do you know Jesus in that manner? So just go and read again the chapter 2 and chapter 3. I don't want to go through, through the same. But uh, according to chapter 1, in chapter 1 when John is introducing Jesus to the people and he is telling them, this is Jesus speaking that, that uh, has sent me. He says, in the first one, I, I will check, is in chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. And it says, John, I mean, the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 4, it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. He knows Jesus that way, that Jesus was, is, and is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. This is John saying he already knew who Jesus was. And so we are asking, do you know Jesus this way? Do you know him as the, uh, as the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, as the ruler? To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us to be 
kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So John is already telling us what he already knows about Jesus. And it is important for all of us to know Jesus. Don't just say Jesus is my savior. Amen, he is. What more do you know about Jesus? I want us to just look a few uh, points about Jesus. That he is at the center of his church. Jesus is at the center of his church. That is what John reveals to us. And he tells us that Jesus is at the center of his church. Verse 12. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to their feet, and guarded about the chest with a golden hand band. His head and his hair were white, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in the furnace, and his voice was as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance uh, was like the sun shining in his strength. Uh, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he had in his right hand, uh, he, he laid his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. In the midst of the seven lampstands, in the midst, Jesus is standing in the midst of the lampstand that represents the churches. And so Jesus is in the midst of his people. He is in the midst of his church. And, and, and we're like now, when we are gathered like this together, he will know that he is in our midst. And even when we are in our homes and you are alone in your home, Jesus is right there with you because he dwells, uh, um, he dwells in the lives of his people. So Jesus is in the center of his church. Secondly, he is the all-knowing God. He is the all-knowing God. Jesus is the omniscient God, all-knowing. When you read chapter 2 and chapter 3, Jesus says, I know your works to every church. Jesus says, I know your works. Yani he knows the first church up to the seventh church. He knows all of them. And like we say even about ourselves, he knows your works, you as an individual. He knows my works. There is nothing that God does not know about our lives. He knows our future. He knows our present. Hallelujah. He is the all-knowing God. He acknowledges your service. He acknowledges whatever you do that is right, even if your pastor does not see. Your pastor does not commend you. Jesus commends you. So serve us unto the Lord. Don't serve your pastor. Don't serve somebody else. Don't serve your boss. Serve us unto the Lord because he knows everything. He sees all that which you do. And when you read Matthew chapter 26, from verse 31 to 46, I may not go there, Matthew chapter 26 from verse 31, you find the story, this was before he was arrested. Yeah, Jesus, before he was arrested, the night in which he was betrayed, the night that he constituted the Lord's table that we are soon going to celebrate, that evening, Jesus already knew what would happen to his disciples. And he told them, he told them, you know, that they need to, to pray to watch and pray so that they do not enter into temptations. Jesus already knew what would happen to them. So when he was arrested, because they did not pray, they did not honor the word of God, they did not take it seriously, what happened to them? They were scattered. The disciples fled when Jesus was arrested. He had told them during the, 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 uh, at the garden of Gethsemane, he had told them, Pray, pray, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptations. The all-knowing God, he knows you. He knows the situation 
that are about to happen in your life. And he's telling us, watch and pray. Yeah? Watch and pray. Be on guard. Because he already knows what will happen. If we do not do so, we will fall like the disciples. They scattered. Peter had already been told, Peter, you will deny me. Before the cock crows, you'll have denied me three times. Peter said, Mimi, Miss Wesley, I can't. Me. I know myself. But Jesus knew him better. Jesus knows us better. So sometimes, even when we are examining ourselves, it's important to remember that Jesus knows us even better than we know ourselves, so that we need to go to him that he may examine us. Hallelujah. Praise God. So do you want to fall like this, this, the disciples fell that evening? No, I don't want. I don't want to, to enter into temptations because I did not do what the Lord told me to do. So any time the Lord speaks to us and gives us his word, it is important for us to take it seriously because it's him who knows what is going to happen to us. And when we take it seriously, then we are able to prepare ourselves and then we are able to be on guard. Hallelujah. So don't do it like Peter. Don't do it like the disciples did. Hearken to his word and obey because he knows our future. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah? John introduces Jesus. We have sung this, this morning. And I don't know, the person who wrote the, that song, because I, 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 I think um, according to my version, New King James Version, it says Jesus is the Alpha. The Alpha and the Omega. He's not just Alpha. He's not just Omega. He is the Alpha. He is the beginning. He is the end. It makes a lot of difference when you say you are Alpha and Omega. If you sing it and say, you are the Alpha, you are the Omega. Amen. He is the, the, the very beginning of everything. Jesus is. The very beginning of your life, Jesus is. The end of your, he knows your end from your beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. This is our God. He knows the beginning of your marriage uh, uh, relationship or a relationship towards marriage. And he knows the very end. There is nothing that Jesus doesn't know, even about your, your work, about your job, about your children, your grandchildren. He knows everything. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he is faithful. The, this is the fourth point. He is faithful. He is the firstborn from the dead. The first person to uh, resurrect and never to die again is Jesus. That is why he says the firstborn from the dead. So you do not need to fear death. If he is the firstborn, that means there are second bones and third bones. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are the other bones. Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. And so you need not fear. Don't fear death. You shall be resurrected. Do you know Jesus that way? Ask your neighbor. Do you know Jesus this way? <laughs> that he is the firstborn from the dead. He also tells us that he loved us. Jesus loved us and he still loves us. Amen. He who loved us and washed us in, from our sins, in his own blood. Hallelujah. He shed his own blood and he washed us. Do you know him this way? As the one who shed his blood and washed us in his own blood because he loved us. Hallelujah. The last one I will mention is that he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. Jesus has looked at you and you and has decided this is a king. This is a priest to my God. Hallelujah. 
give each other high fives and say hi, King to the Lord. Hi, priest of the Most High. Yeah, encourage each other. King to the Most High. Amen. Priest unto our God. This is who our Jesus is. We need to know him in this way. Our lives become even more, uh, more, more fruitful when we know Jesus in depth, in all the ways. I have left the others for you to go and read more. Amen. 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 Jesus, make him central in your life. He is in the center of his church. Make him central in your life. That there is nothing that you do in your life that Jesus is not in the center. Amen. If you're a young person, you want to marry, please make Jesus the center of your life. Amen. You know, sometimes we hear somebody took a, a lady, they went and did a traditional wedding, and then they come to church. And now, <laughs> Pastor, bless us. Bless our mother. You've already taken your marriage to the traditional altar. So, You've already offered it there. Hey, my brothers and my sisters, make Jesus the center of your life. When you do that, you will be faithful to the end. Faithful to the end. So that was point number one. Who Jesus? About Jesus. The Jesus who introduces himself. Amen. Amen. Number two. What would Jesus commend you for? When you look at your life, what would Jesus commend you for? Do you, would you say, I am loving? At least he would say, I am loving. Would you like look at yourself and say, I am compassionate? Yeah? I can't pass somebody who is in need. Uh, can you check yourself and say, I hate what God hates? I think he would commend me for that. You know, what would Jesus commend us for? Even a city church. What would Jesus commend us for? And look at a church like this and say, Crisco City Church, I commend you for... What, would you, what do you think Jesus will commend us for? You are thinking hard. Does it mean there is nothing that Jesus would commend us for? God help us. Consistency. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister. My sister there, Sister Lois. What would Jesus commend you for? You know, it's a great challenge. Because you examine yourself, you say, at least, okay, I'm reading this about the churches that were commended you know, for this particular uh, 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 areas. But what about me, personally? What would Jesus commend me for? So that you'll be able to move, to grow in that area. You'll be able to keep up in that area. When we look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, it, it gives us the fruit of the Spirit. That is an area you can start and say, Lord, I, I desire that in my life you may commend me for these things, that the fruit of the Spirit may be in, my, in me, that you commend me for love, you commend me for joy, you commend me for peace, long-suffering, you know. What would Jesus commend you for? When he was speaking to, to, the, to, the, to the churches in, in chapter 3, he says, hold fast what you have. You need to know what you have. <laughs> How do you hold fast to something that you do not know? Something that you don't know that you have. So it is good for you to know what do I have? You know, because Jesus says, hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. That's uh, Revelation chapter 3. And he says, behold, I am coming quickly. So hold fast, because Jesus is coming quickly. That's why he wants us to be faithful to the, to the end, because when he comes, he wants us to find us holding fast what we have, because we are faithful to the very end. That is Jesus' desire for you. He commends faithfulness to the end. So tell the Lord Jesus, help me. 
whatever I have undertake to do, I will be faithful to the very end. Amen. Those who signed in for the, in the commitment class for particular ministries, I commend you. I pray for you that the Lord will help you. Those areas that you, you have desired to serve in, that you start well and you go well to the very end. Whatever areas, brothers and sisters, you have given yourself to serve in, even in the house of God, be faithful to the end. Be, be faithful to the end. Jesus commends faithfulness to the end. Not just beginning. Even the runners, our athletes, they don't begin and they say, at least Kenyans have seen me. I have. I have started the race. But they, they move to the very end. They want to be faithful to their nation, to the very end of that race. So we want to be faithful to our God to the very end of our lives, not just the end of this year, but to the very end of our lives. And it's only God who knows our end. So that's why we want to have continuous assessment, examining ourselves, how we are doing, because we want to be faithful to the end. All right, number three. What rebukes would you receive? What corrections? would you receive from Jesus? What rebukes would you receive from Jesus? What would Jesus rebuke you for? Maybe you look at yourself and say, I'm always, I always come to church late. So I know, I know the first rebuke <laughs> is slothful. <laughs> that I am slothful, that I come to church late, that I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm, I'm not quick, yeah? slow and slothful. What do you think Jesus would rebuke you for? Do you know some of us really don't like to be rebuked? Try. Try to rebuke somebody. Your sister there, your brother there. Yeah? People resist. They resist to be corrected. But my brother and my sister, this is the way of a Christian. This is the Christian walk of rebukes and corrections. Because none of us is perfect. And that is why we come to the house of God. That's why we read the word, that we may be rebuked, that we may be corrected. Amen. So that we are able to be faithful to thee and hallelujah. So if any person rebukes you, tell them, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. You are helping me. You are helping me to be faithful to the very end. So receive correction. Receive rebuke uh, uh, positively. You know, like the church in Ephesus, when they were told that they have lost their first love, they were not just told and left. But Jesus corrected them and told them, as much as you have lost your first love, the correction is, remember. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works. So it is so important for us to receive correction. Because when you receive correction, that's when you are able to repent, to turn again, to, to, to turn to God. And when you turn to God, that uh, area... Has, is already taken care of. It's cleansed. You are washed. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where it needs talking to somebody else, then you do that and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And our relationships are, are renewed, are restored, and we are able to move on faithfully to the very end. So what is it that Jesus would rebuke you for even this day? Yeah? Are you wary of doing good? You've been doing good and it seems like nobody notices. And so you decide, mm, forget about it. Are you wary of doing good? Would Jesus rebuke you for that? Are you fearful of death? And so if somebody comes and tells you, steal, otherwise, or else I will kill you. So you go to steal. Because you are fearful of death, you go compromising. 
because you are fearful of death. And we've just been told that Jesus is the first one from the dead. Do you know if you don't fear death, there's nothing somebody can do to you? I think uh, uh, Elder, uh, Elder, Elder Nyandiko's son, <laughs> he, he did not fear death at that moment. Because if he had the fear of death, he would not have uh, accosted that man. But he had that boldness, like, I need to do this. Yeah? So let us have no fear, because compromise comes because of our fear here and fear there. So you compromise. Um, lukewarmness. Uh, slothfulness, we have uh, just been told, lazy, murmuring, complaining. Anything that happens, you're complaining. You complain about the nation. You complain about your church. You complain about your leaders. You complain. Complaining. Hey, is that what Jesus would uh, rebuke you for? Exam Let's examine our lives. Amen. Amen. Let's examine our lives. That's why the psalmist said in Psalm 139, verse 23, search me, O God. Because when I search myself, sometimes I don't see like I have anything wrong in me. But Lord, you search me. When you search me, you will know my innermost being. You will know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Yeah? And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting, in the way faithfulness to the end, that is the way everlasting. So repent of every wicked way the Lord reveals to you. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a life we have to keep repenting because we are not perfect. Jesus told the churches to repent, to repent, um, a number of churches, repent. Turn away from that because he wants you to be faithful to the very end. Be faithful. Number four, promises to overcome us. Jesus promises rewards. There are rewards, eternal rewards. Whatever we do for Jesus is never in vain. Whatever you do, even when you give a glass of water. Hmm? When you give a glass of water to someone, more so a servant of God. <laughs> you get a reward. <laughs> you get a reward. Whoever gave me that glass of water, may she receive rewards even eternally. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. There are eternal rewards. Only for those who are faithful to the end. Rewards uh, come at the end of uh, uh, an exercise. We, we don't get rewards in the middle. Yeah, It's at the end. At the end of the year, we have rewards in schools, isn't it? We have rewards at the end of, of races. So it is at the end. When, when you do a course, you get rewards at the end. So even in our Christian land, we get eternal rewards when we finish, we finish well, when we, have, we are faithful to the very end. Hallelujah. So be faithful to the end, my brother, my sister. Despite the challenges that you will face, there are many challenges that you face so that you become unfaithful. Many challenges. Sometimes you, have, you want to wake up in the morning to pray. Uh, and that is the morning the sleep is heaviest. <laughs> and you say, Lord, let me just pray here. Rabba, rabba. You wake up an hour later. <laughs> To realize you succumbed. <laughs> yeah? Let us be faithful to the end, despite the challenges that we'll face, the difficulties that we face in life, even persecution. One of the churches talked about the persecution and suffering. Let us purpose to be faithful to the very end. Faithful in the church, 
faithful at home, faithful in every aspect of our lives, faithful to the end, because Jesus has eternal rewards. You know, some of the rewards that we read in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, some of them may not make much, much meaning to you, that you'll be given a stone <laughs> on it written, yeah, your new name, a white stone, you know. So you may wonder, ah, what? But let me tell you, you may not appreciate it now, but in eternity, hey, you will say thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping me to be faithful to them, to the end. Hallelujah. Amen. We have eternal life. If you don't understand all those others, you have eternal life. The bottom line is eternal life with Jesus. Yes, with all the goody goodies that he has who are for those who are faithful to the end. Yeah, there will be goody goodies, benefits to those who are faithful to the very end. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us be faithful to the end. There are rewards for us. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have a number five. Let's celebrate him. Let us celebrate him who loved us and washed us in his own blood. Washed us from our sins. Let us celebrate him. Amen. Amen. Let us celebrate him with, at the Lord's table. When you take that cup, you celebrate Jesus. You washed me. You loved me and you washed me from my sins with your own blood. Jesus, I celebrate you. I appreciate you. I love you. I thank you. Huh? When you take that piece of bread, you say, Jesus, this is your body that was broken for me. For me, a sinner like me. You broke, you broke your body for me. I celebrate you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. And I want to be faithful to you to the very end. Amen. Amen. That we will eat at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That final meal, I don't know whether it will a final one, but that meal, <laughs> if there will be many, hallelujah, she said, the goody goodies, yes. whatever the goody goodies, but we want to be there, Amen. faithful to the very end. Amen. Amen, hallelujah. I want us to pray. I want us to pray and ask God, God, and I, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, that you have revealed yourself to me. I pray that you'll help me to know you better. And we ask the Lord to forgive us for the things that he has rebuked us over or for. Yeah? Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us for our lukewarmness. Forgive us for our half-heartedness. Forgive us for not loving you as we ought. Forgive us, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus, that you have not spat us from your mouth. He would have done so when we are lukewarm. He would have done so, but he has not. By his grace and his mercy, he has upheld us. Amen. So we want to, to just to repent and to, uh, and to tell the Lord thank you. Yeah? And then we will come to celebrate uh, the Lord's table. So let, let us stand. Oh, Lord Jesus, we appreciate you this day, oh God. So please lift your voices and let us uh, just thank Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for revealing yourself to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh God, that we know you in many ways, more, more ways than we knew you before, oh God. We appreciate you. We appreciate, oh Lord, that you have not hidden yourself from us. You have told us that you are the Alpha. You have told us you are the Omega. Oh God, and everything about us, you, this you know, oh God, the omnipresent God. You know our future, oh God. You know our today. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for revealing yourself to us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us to heed to your word. Help us to heed to your word, oh God. That what you have told us to do, that we shall do, that we shall be faithful to the end. Help us to be faithful to the end, oh God, that you may receive the eternal reward. Oh, gracious God, we appreciate you for your mercies towards us. We thank you for your long suffering towards us, oh God. We pray, oh God, this day that you will help us, oh God, 
to receive the correction, to receive the, the rebuke, even from you, even as individuals, oh God, that we may be able to shape up, that we may be able to correct our ways. Oh God, in our homes we correct our ways. In our places of work we correct our ways. Even here in church, oh God, help us to correct our ways because we have received your correction in a positive manner, oh God. Oh Lord, what a loving God you are. You who loved us and you, show, you, you washed us from our sins by your own blood, the blood that you shed at Calvary. Oh, Lord Jesus, we appreciate you. We thank you, mighty God. Let there be a transformation, a total transformation in our lives. Oh, God, and the next time we are even thinking this way, oh, God, we will find that there's a lot of change in our lives. You may have moved from one level of glory to another, one level of faithfulness to another, oh, God, that we will be the faithful people the faithful servants of God, that even when we stand before you at the last day, you shall tell us good, uh, welcome, good and faithful servants. Oh Lord, we want to com be commended even by you, Lord Jesus, as good and faithful servants. That is what you have called us to be, good and faithful servants, oh God. You have not called us to be excellent. You have not called us to be uh, not to ever sin, but you have called us, oh God, to be good and faithful servants. Help us, our Lord. Help us, oh God, to follow you to the very end. Help us, oh God, to follow your footsteps. Well, thank you, oh God, for the way you spoke to these churches. Thank you that you have been speaking to us and that you may continue, oh God, even the same way, that we may be truly divinely aligned even to your plans and to your purposes for our lives. Even as we move to this other section, oh God, even celebrating you and the Lord's table, Father, we, may we pray that our hearts, oh God, shall be in tune with you, Lord Jesus, as we celebrate you in thanksgiving, in praises, and in worship from our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to welcome the worship team. Chapter 26, verse 26 says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, <coughs> blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. So I've taken the bread. I want to, to bless it before breaking it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, O oh God. You who took the bread and blessed it, before you broke it, before your disciples. We thank you, O oh God, that we take the cue from you. We pre present this bread, and we ask that you would bless it, O oh God. Bless it even as we fellowship over it. 
is that this be a meal of celebration, O God, celebrating what you have done for us, that you broke your body for us, or your body was broken even for us. O God, we are grateful. Bless this bread, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them. So I take the cup that represents all the juice that has been served in the cups. Uh, and we bless it um, before we take it. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for loving us. You loved us and you washed us from our sins by your own blood. And so we thank you this day. You who took the cup and said that this is your blood. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for this juice that represents the blood of Jesus Christ. As we take it, as we partake of it together in celebration, in thankfulness, oh God, for what you did for us. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that not only washed us, but continually washes us. Oh God, because the power that is in the blood of Jesus um, never finishes. Thank you, oh God, for the power in the blood that it continually cleanses us from our sins. Your own blood, not the blood of animals, but the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we ask that you would bless this drink even as we partake of it together. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry. We are celebrating him who washed us from our sins by his blood. So you must have that testimony that you have been washed by the blood of Jesus, yes. meaning that you are born again, that you are saved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. Uh, in your hand is a piece of bread and a cup of juice. Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. So we took the bread, we blessed it, and we broke it. And you have been given. And Jesus is saying, take it, this is my body. You eat with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's eat the bread first. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for your bread, for your body that was broken for us. We take and eat it in celebration, celebrating what you did for us with thanksgiving. Amen. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The blood of Jesus was shed for many, for you, for me, and for all those even who have not come to the knowledge of Jesus. It has already been shed for them. Amen. The blood of the new covenant. And so we drink this cup, we drink from the cup with thanksgiving appreciating what the Lord Jesus has done for our lives. Amen. Let's drink together. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Lord Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you. Thank you for your great love for us, Lord Jesus. We appreciate your love. We appreciate your love. Help us to love you to the very end. Help us, oh God, not to lose our love for you, Jesus. Oh God, help us to return to the first love because you loved us so much. You gave your whole self for us. Oh God, we want to love you. We want to love you, Lord, in a new way. We want to be faithful, loving you. Faithfully loving you even to the very end. Lord, we appreciate you and we glorify your name. Help us, oh God, to live life anew to the glory of your name. 
Blessed be your holy name, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah.